Hi, this is Lisa Allen, and in this video, I just wanted to do a quick review of a fairly new security plugin called Ninja Firewall. And what's interesting about this particular plugin is that although you can manage it from the WordPress admin dashboard, this plugin is actually more of a standalone firewall. What it does basically is that it intercepts all requests going to PHP in whatever directories you've configured and it makes sure that all of those requests came through WordPress first and then it also has some options to sanitize some of the data that comes in and to check for certain kinds of uh, characters in posts and, and requests and filter them out. So it's a very interesting little plugin. So let's just go into the plugin and talk a little bit about some of the different settings. And I also had a couple of things to mention too. When you first install this plugin, it goes through a fairly detailed walkthrough where it installs itself and it has to make some changes to your HT access file and create a php.ini file in your WordPress directory. And it does this so that it can start intercepting requests but there are some pretty big scary warnings shown while you're installing it warning you that you must never alter any part of the plugin from outside your WordPress admin or you could be locked out of your site. And that includes things like by FTP or by using the file editor. All of those things are things that you definitely should not do once you've installed this. So the only place you should install and uninstall this from is from the WordPress dashboard itself because that is the place where it will uninstall all the little pieces that it put in different places to to install itself as a standalone firewall. And when you go to install it I would recommend that you actually read the information that it gives you about what will be installed where so that if something happens and you do have to manually uninstall this you actually know what needs to be uninstalled. Now once you have it installed you can see that we've got an overview and it tells you whether the firewall is enabled and whether the PHP hook which it installed to make it so that it intercepts all the requests to PHP is there and you can see in my case it is it tells you how your PHP is running and which version of the plugin and if you go into the firewall options these are pretty easy to configure you can just turn the firewall on or off if you want to turn it off for a little bit you can just click on disabled and save the firewall options and it's also got its own little debug mode that's disabled by default so if you're trying to work something out and get it configured correctly you can turn the debugging on but most of the time you'd want it off and when it decides to block something like say somebody's trying to hack your blog or there's a request that it just doesn't know what to do with like maybe it's a little bit weird you can control which error code is being returned here you can either call it a bad request or say that they don't have access or not found not acceptable internal server error service unavailable so you have a variety of options but the default is for 403 forbidden and then of course you can edit the message that's returned along with the error code so you can see that set of options is really pretty easy to deal with now there's the firewall policies section is a little bit more complicated in here you're able to determine whether you want the Ninja Firewall to be processing all of your requests, whether they come through a regular HTTP request or a secured SSL request. And so you can choose either one or both. You can also choose to disallow file uploads. Now, in this particular case, if you are going to be using your blog regularly and uploading images and all kinds of things, then you might want to switch the default to allow uploads. Uh, sanitized file names means that it will strip out bad characters that could be used to, to try and hack. And so you can check that if you want to uh, change that allow uploads but have it do a little bit of protecting there and it can also scan different types of requests get requests and post requests it can scan your cookies and it can also do the same thing that it did with file names which is to block bad characters that can be used to hack in your cookies and then there's some also some other things that it can lock down and scan and a lot of this gets a little bit more complicated so you probably would just leave it as the defaults unless you really know what you're doing but the defaults seem pretty reasonable in most cases. 
And then there's a couple of extra things down here under WordPress. You can block direct access to any of the PHP files that are part of your WordPress that are located in one of these directories. So like say you have a plugin. Sometimes people will try and hack into your site by looking for plugins that they know have vulnerabilities. And so using this feature, you can actually stop people from directly accessing those files. The file actually has to be called as part of WordPress rather than by itself and so that that provides an extra little bit of uh, protection there and you get the same kind of a thing for the themes folder and you can also turn off the plugin and the theme editor which means that if people have access to your blog and have that kind of access you can just shut the editor off so that nobody can edit your plugins or your themes uh, while you're not looking and you can choose down here not to block the administrator, which is the default, or you can have it block everyone, including the admin, if it detects something bad going on. And once you've altered those to fit your needs, then you just click on Save Firewall Policies. Now it also does have a button here to restore the defaults, so you don't have to remember which what they were, which is kind of nice. And then it does also keep some statistics. If you have had a lot of requests, it will keep track of things. It also has a log, but of course I don't have anything in here because this is a very lonely little demo blog. But that's really all there is to setting up the Ninja Firewall. Like I said, it's a very, very interesting little plugin because it is more of a standalone program than just a WordPress plugin so it can actually protect much more than WordPress. I think overall it will turn out to be a good little plugin. It looks very usable and it looks like it has a lot of possibilities and of course it's it's in its early days yet so it remains to be seen. I do like it so I, I would say thumbs up on this one. So that's it for this video and thank you for watching.